Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday, and in this video we are going to learn how to interact with the Stripe API to basically make this page functional. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull products and prices down through the Stripe API, and then we're going to add this and create a checkout session, redirecting the, the user over to a, to a checkout page on Stripe so that we can charge their card because knowing how to work with the Stripe API is very important because it's the main way to collect money online. So let's get started. This is what we're going to sort of bring to life here and let's jump over first to Stripe. So if I go to my Stripe dashboard here, um, what I'm going to need to do first is to get the API keys. So we click get API keys and there's two of them. There's the publishable key. So we're gonna copy that go over to our app and locally I'm going to have a file in Next.js called .env.local. This is not one that you're going to commit. You would upload these environment variables to Vercel or wherever you're hosting um, if you want to have them there. So I'm going to paste in this here and this is next public Stripe public key because we want next um, to expose it into the front end. And now we've got the secret key. This is one you do not want to expose. So we're going to come in here and note there's no next public, so this will be kept server side only. So with these in place, we will hop to our console, restart the next app so that it pulls in um, the environment variables from this .env.local. And you can see here it tells you loaded env from .env.local. So now we've got this page here up and running. Sweet. So what I have done is I have added two products, actually three, but I have this nice dog that's currently archived. So I have two products available inside of here. One that is a one hour training session that costs 150 bucks. And another is a PR code review, which costs 100. These aren't real products I'm selling. This is just in a dummy Stripe account to show it. But what I've done is I've added these products. I've set up images for them, given them a name and a price here and that is what is needed to basically go and get this data populating from the products we have on Stripe. So we're going to do that with server-side rendering actually and we're going to do that all on our home page so index.tsx. Now I have a whole bunch of code here but it's just pure dummy HTML everything's hard-coded that we're going to to make real. So what we've got here is an unordered list that has two products inside of it. Each product has a title, an image, a cost. Now Stripe through their API gives it to you as cents. So here I have $100 plus two zeros to make it um, 10,000 cents. I've just got some uh, TypeScript here because it's not quite sure um, what it's coming at, down as through the Stripe API. I'm dividing it by 100 to convert it back into dollars, and then I'm applying a bit of formatting with dot two fixed with two decimal places. So that's what that cost is showing up to get this formatted $100. And then when you click the button, um, it's going to call this on click, passing in the ID of the price. Now each product can have multiple price points. So what you actually do is you work more with price than product, um, but we'll get into that in a second. So I've just dummied out this, this uh, price ID here. So let's make this real. We're going to do it in a server side function. And for that, we're going to say export const get server side props. And since we're working with TypeScript, I just have to uncomment the packages that we're working with. So we've got this, which we're going to use now, which is from Next Direct, but we're working with a few different Stripe um, clients or uh, Stripe packages as well. We've got Stripe JS, which is client side JavaScript code. We've got Stripe, which is server side Node Stripe code, and then we've got this Next Stripe client, which is a package to help us easily integrate um, Stripe with Next.js. So I'm just I've already got these imported here, but let's pop down and we're just declaring this get server side props. This can make sure Next.js code SSR, and this will basically run on the server 
and pass whatever it returns as props to your component. So we'll do that in a second. So this is equal to an async function. And inside of this function, what I first want to do is create an instance of the server side Stripe client. So we're going to say const Stripe is equal to new Stripe. And what you pass in is your API key. So I have this in process.env. It's not the public key. It's actually the Stripe secret key because we're running server side. And I'm also going to pass in the version of the API that we're working with. So the one we're working with is, I don't know how it knew, maybe because I was working on this before, but um, there we go. So with our Stripe client on the server, we're now going to call it and ask for all of the prices for the products that we have. So we're gonna say prices is equal to await stripe.prices and we want a list of them. So we can pass in some options now. You saw that I had one archived um, product. Here we can say active true. So we only want the unarchived ones, the, the, uh, yeah, the active ones. And we're gonna limit it to 10. You can set up this limit if you want. And what we're going to do is we're gonna say expand. And for now, I'm gonna leave this as an empty array, but I'll show you what this does in a little bit. So with the prices here, what we're going to do is return them so that we can pass them as props to our component. So we're gonna say props and what we're passing are the prices. And it's not just the prices thing, it's actually prices.data because they give you a little bit of extra data to go along with it. So this runs on the server. It returns this data which gets passed to your component here. So we're going to say we're receiving prices and our interface is not set up to receive prices yet. So we're going to go and add that in and we're going to say um, that we are going to receive prices and it is going to be something we declare called an I price, an array of them. That doesn't exist yet so we're going to say interface I price, and what this is going to be is actually it's going to extend from stripe.price like this because we're going to tweak it a little bit later. I'll just add a space there. So Stripe exports all of the types that they're working with. So here you can access them and um, that's all good now. So why don't we just take a look at what this data looks like. So we're going to put it in a pre and we're going to JSON stringify it. So we've got the prices, null, true, and we'll see what the Stripe API is giving us. So if I just refresh it here, here are the prices that we're getting server-side rendering through their API. So you can see here, um, we know it's USD, we know it's 150, uh, 15,000 cents, 150 bucks, but you can see there's no info here about the product itself. So all, all it gives us is the ID of the product. Great, so how do we get this product information? The way Stripes deals with this, Stripes, Stripe deals with this, is that you can tell it to expand other things. So we're going to tell it to expand data.product. And by telling it to do that, it basically inlines all the information about the product. So now you can see we have all the product info, which includes our image and our description and the name of it, which we're going to use for a title. So with our data in place, why don't we get rid of this dummy stuff here and instead iterate over each of the prices and render them out on the screen. So we're gonna say prices.map and each one will be a price and then what it's going to return is this li, just like that. So we'll swap out the key to be price.id um, and then we need this title here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say price dot product and remember it was dot name. So you see here I have a TypeScript issue. Name does not exist on type string or product or deleted product. And there's a problem that the TypeScript type isn't aware that we expanded the product information. 
So that's actually why I went and extended the stripe.price type so that we can come in here and we can say, hey, the product is going to be a stripe product. It's not going to be a string and all, all those other options available. And by doing this, we've extended this type and now it knows that the name is going to be a string. So let's keep going. We have the image here below. So this came from price.product.images and we're just going to show the first one. Let's fill in the actual price now. So that would be price and then the value for that came from unit amount. Perfect. So the reason I said as number is because it could be number or null. We're saying no, it's gonna it's gonna be a number, um, just so that it's TypeScript's happy. So now this on click, we're going to pass in the actual price ID, just like this. So if I were to refresh. Why don't I get rid of the pre because that's not needed anymore. There we go. Now we're displaying the two products that are coming from the Stripe API. So the next step that we need to do is basically go and fill in this on click um, function. And the first thing we want to do is basically create what's called a new checkout session. And that has to be done server side. So we could go into the API folder and declare an endpoint basically to, to on the server, create a new checkout session. But there's a really nice package that you can work with. I'll link to it in the description. It's called Next Stripe. It's in beta right now, but it seems like they're working on it quite a bit. So user beware. And what you do is inside of the API folder, you create a folder called Stripe, and then you name the file with square brackets, dot, 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 next stripe, dot, js or dot, ts. And inside of here, you can export um, a function. So you, what you do is you say export default next stripe. And all you have to do is pass in your secret key, which we've used before. It comes from process.env.stripe secret key. And then that's it. What this does, if we look for next stripe, it gives you the ability to easily do a bunch of things. For example, create a checkout session, create a payment intent, confirm a payment intent, retrieve it, update it, create a billing portal session. So that's all it can do for now, but they're adding and adding to it. And you don't have to worry about the server side implementation. You basically just call it from the client using some really easy to use um, functions that they give you. And then they handle all the back end. So that's what we have to do here. We now go back to the front end and what we can do is use it to create a new checkout session. So what we're going to do is say const session is equal to await create checkout session. This is something I imported from that package I just showed. And to this, we need to pass a bunch of options. Where to send the user oops, when they check out successfully we're just going to send them back to this current page. You could send them anywhere on a thanks page, whatnot. It's up to you. Where to send them when they, if they cancel. So we'll send them back to the same page. What are they actually going to buy? So here you can pass in. There's a few ways you can configure this, but what we're going to do is pass in just the one um, price ID that they want to buy. So here we say the price is equal to the price ID and quantity one. So I'm just always assuming they're gonna buy one of these. You could, if you want, create your own um, shopping cart where they can add maybe one or two of these or buy two products at once. It's up to you, but we're just buying one at a time for now. Payment method types, we're gonna see say that what's available is a, a card and then the mode is a payment as opposed to a subscription, which would charge the user sort of every month. So what this does, it will give us uh, a session back and that session has an ID. So what we need to do is basically use that ID to redirect them over to Stripe. And the way you do that is you work with the Stripe client side library. So that's this one here, Stripe, Stripe.js. 
and they give you a function called load stripe that will ensure that the script has been loaded on the page before you try to use it. And what you do is you say stripe is equal to load stripe. And here you pass in your public key. So your next public stripe public key and you await. So by the time we get to this point, we are going to have either an instance of the Stripe client or null. So to handle the, the null case, we'll just say if Stripe, um, you might want to handle an error, what would happen if you can't load it. But if Stripe, we're going to use the Stripe JavaScript client to redirect the user over to the checkout that's being hosted by Stripe themselves. So redirect to checkout, we want to send them to the session ID that we just created, which is session dot ID. So with that in place, we can go and test out this checkout flow. So we come to our page, just make sure it's here. So what I want to buy, let's buy a code review, hundred bucks. So we click buy. What it did there, a few things. Remember it on click, given a price ID, it created a new checkout session using this next Stripe package. And then we made sure to load the Stripe client side library, and then we redirect it over to the checkout. So what we can do here is we can just enter in our information. So I'll do mine quickly. 4242, which is the Stripe testing card. Any date in the future, say my name is my name. Um, uh, N0B2K0 is my postal and we'll go and pay. So this is charging my dummy card and then redirecting me back here on success. So what we could do now is go in here and click into the payment section. And I, I made one the other day, but this one on February 2 is the one we just created now. And you can see that I was charged for a code review. So now you could put yourself in contact with the customer and work out the details. What I would recommend for next steps is maybe you want to redirect them to a custom success page where you're going to give them details like, Hey, thanks for buying a code review. Um, I've received it. I'll be in touch with you shortly. Click here to schedule a time or whatever you want to work out with your customers. Um, you also might want to look into Stripe webhooks. What that is, is basically on the success of a, of a charge, they would send a request to your server, letting you know that, hey, someone with all of these details just purchased this product, and then you could handle that flow within your own application. But that's a bit beyond the scope of this video, so that's it. What we've done in about 15 minutes is through server-side rendering with Next.js, we pulled products and prices through the Stripe API, we created a checkout session, we took the user over, and we charged their credit card. So we collected money from a user in about 15 minutes. Not bad at all. All right, that's it, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.